Hey everybody, welcome to Cheap Knife Week Volume 3, and this is the third video of Volume 3. What do you think about that, huh? Today we're taking a look at... Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure exactly what we're taking a look at today. Um, <laughs> this knife, as far as I can tell, has no name. So I ordered this off Amazon a long time ago in preparation for Cheap Knife Week. Um, and back when I ordered it, these were going for like $27. Uh, so I'm checking up now. It looks like these are on Amazon for $32.99. They are out of stock at the time of recording. But let me, let me just read to you the, uh, the, the name of this knife. Brace yourself. This is the Vortec. That's all caps, of course. Ball bearing pivot system, heavy duty EDC folding pocket knife, 8CR13 MOV, razor sharp blade, LMF style pommel with lanyard, smooth, fast, one hand opening. And uh, that's that, that's all I could find. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure what I'm going to label this uh, review as uh, because there's not even a um, product number anywhere on the piece. So yeah, there we go. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and get this review rolling, shall we? I mean, we already read off a bunch of specs in that uh, title, but let's uh, let's go ahead and measure this guy. If we go back to the edge here, we are coming in, whoops, get on screen, get in, about three and a half inches. If we go all the way back to the scale, we're coming in, wow, closer to, don't go all the way in there, close to 3.7 inches. So yeah, big knife. Um, however, the blade length is not where this knife is really all that big at. Um, he's pretty chonky. Uh, you know, let's do some size comparisons of the chonkiness real quick. This is my uh, CGRB Pyrite. Yeah, yeah. pretty chonky. <laughs> and um, heavy, super heavy with this huge, ridiculous lanyard that we'll talk about later. Okay, let's go ahead and get our size comparisons going. Let's bring out our rats to start with. As always, you guys know how this works. There's our rats. So yeah, definitely a big um, overcompensating, I mean, <clears throat> definitely a big uh, mall ninja, it's a big knife. Let's bring out our Civivis. Praxis. Elementum. There we go. Yeah, it's a big knife. It's a big knife. Hopefully you guys are uh, getting the picture by now. Finch made bug out. Spiderco PM2. Good deal, good deal. And um, let's go ahead and finish up size comparisons by comparing it against the knives that we've already looked at for Cheap Knife Week. Starting off with the Crescent Harpoon whatever, and the Ozark Trail shaft lock, uh, get your head out of the gutter. There we go. Alrighty. What are we looking at in terms of materials? Well, this Tonto blade is an 8CR13 MOV, which they do, come on camera, focus up. Whenever I try filming these videos at this time of day, my camera does not like to focus. But yeah, there we are, 8CR13 MOV. Nice, we have just Tons of steel <laughs> for the liners and bolster butt caps. Uh, and uh, we have G10 scales. So yeah, we are running on bearings. It is a steel liner lock with this nylon um, lanyard. Let's go ahead and get to the cutting footage. Alrighty guys, let's talk about this absolutely ridiculous beast. This is the Vortec something or another. I can't remember the name right now. This is a crazy knife. And uh, curious to see what it'll do today. So as you can tell, excuse the wind, we're doing all the uh, Cheap Knife Week Volume 3 uh, review cutting on the same day because just busy. I, I've got some time right now. We're just going to knock it out, right? Um, 
trying to change up the scenery just a little bit. Maybe we'll drive a little bit further down the road. But anyways, okay, so let's start off with the action. You've got a flipper tab. It's flipper only. Um, technically, there is a fuller in the blade. You can even see that. But when the knife is closed, you can't get to it at all. Um, as for the action, though, the flipper tab, the detent is very strong. The action is actually really nice. It is running on bearings. No complaints there. If you've seen the uh, meme video that Sharpen Blade did, geez, almost a year ago at this point. That's how long I've had you? Um, this is the knife that I unboxed where the detail was stronger than I was expecting, and I went, ow! Interesting walk bar. Okay, let's get it open. Flipper tab. Ow! I feel good. And he made the, yeah, you guys have seen it. I'll, I'll link the video in the description. It's, yeah. But yes, very strong flipper tab. Positioned a little bit weirdly, like you've got kind of this overhang above it. But, you know, you can't get to it. Um, this is kind of to do with the action, but the lock bar release is really interesting. We'll talk about that at the table. Um, ergonomics. It's a, it's a rectangle of metal and G10. Um, I don't feel the clip very much, which is good, but there are some sharp edges off of here, and it's just blocky. Um, I wouldn't call it... It's on the verge of uncomfortable, but not quite there yet. It's... It, it's. I mean, there's... I, I can feel hot spots. If there was one more hot spot, it would be an uncomfortable knife. We'll say it like that. Um... Also, something I just realized, how did it take me this long to realize this? In the G10, we have um, these things scooped out for like, get to a thumb stud, but there is no thumb stud. So I wonder if there's a version of this that does have a thumb stud. I don't know, not important. Um, one thing we can talk about the ergonomics is this big old lanyard that this thing comes with. I have left this on for demonstrative purposes. This is ridiculous. I mean, let's see if I can like flip the knife through the lanyard. Come on. Yep. Well, that's why they did that. It's a fun little game. Um, I don't know why this is on here, honestly. Um, I mean. I guess it gives you a little bit of extra paracord in an emergency situation. Maybe there's... I don't know. This is just a stupid lanyard to me. And uh, I, I, I don't know what the heck you would need this much lanyard on a pocket knife for. What if we did like... Uh... Yeah, we can do like this. Tighten that down. No, there's even too much to do that. The double-handed lanyard. Um, yeah, it's goofy. All right, what's it look like in the pocket? That much of the knife is sticking out of your pocket. That's like all the knife. Takes up some room. It's got a pocket pecker for sure. I mean, look how low that clip is. At least it's tip up carry, I guess. The clip itself is not very good. Uh, and this knife weighs a ton. Like, this weighs a lot. I bet, I bet you could do a lot of damage. That's what the, that's what this is for. Oh my goodness, guys. We figured it out. This is to make it an effective tactical weapon. All right, there we go. We figured it out. That's why it's got this big lanyard. Good on us. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get some cutting done. So we have a Tonto blade of 8CR13 MOV steel. Let's get some cutting done. It cuts. 
go ahead and grab our uh, rope. Okay. All right, so that did exactly what I was expecting it to do, unlike the little Ozark Trail knife. Um, yeah, you have a Tonto where you can really crunch down on the tip. You've got a lot of weight behind this knife, and uh, the blade itself is pretty robust. So I expect it to do pretty good on that test, and I was not disappointed. Okay, let's go ahead and get our pool noodle out here, see what we got. Okay, so that went a little bit, a little less well. Uh, actually, though, it did okay. Um, not amazing, but okay. This slice here came out pretty good. Um, no real complaints there. But this slice that I tried to go real thin on, you can see how wavy we went, and then it got to where the blade just couldn't cut that thin. It ended up kind of. You can actually see it better here. We kind of started squishing the pool noodle instead of cutting through it. And then we got hung up and, and that came off. But overall, actually not bad. I am, I'm not disappointed in that, so nice. Let's go ahead and get back to the table and talk about this bad boy. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. So let's go ahead and talk about what I'm liking and not liking about this knife. Uh, number one, the action is actually phenomenal. Um, very, very snappy, nice, uh, smooth, consistent close. We have no, well, a little bit of wiggle, but I can adjust that out. So yeah, that's good to see. Very, very strong detent. Well, I'll, I'll shut up so you can listen to this. Yeah, really nice. No detent lash or any, well, actually a little bit of detent lash, just a tiny bit, but yeah, good action. Um, very, very impressive. Uh, yeah, I did not expect this knife to have such good action, but it does, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, next thing, the centering is good, like the fit finish. I think this knife, uh, you know, came to me exactly the way they intended it to. So, you know, that's nice. Um, one thing I want to check right now, actually, uh, we'll do that in just a second. Um, next thing I like is uh, the G10 uh, inserts here are actually pretty nice. I do like the texturing. I like this little scoop out here. Um, it's good looking G10. It really is. This kind of checker pattern uh, gives nice texture, and you know that these the, this little uh, cutouts or or I don't know sanded down indentations uh, give a nice little bit of contrast. And uh, yeah, I think that's. I think that's cool. Thank you, camera. So yeah, good stuff there. Uh, the thing I was gonna check real quick, and we're going to right now, is this backspacer. I don't know if it's metal or if it's also G10. Um, oh no. Well, that's unfortunate. I used to have a little magnet on my uh, keychain, but it looks like it has fallen off. It's little cord was on the way out. Okay, well, no problem. I've got another magnet with me. So it's just gonna be a little bit bigger. Yeah, I'm getting on getting both sides. <sighs> Time to grab my other magnet. <laughs> I've got magnets everywhere, guys. Do y'all just love magnets? Don't you know? Yeah. Yep, that backspacer is steel. Wow, this thing has a lot of steel. Okay, um, next thing. Uh, the, the blade is not terrible. Um, it's definitely a usable uh, knife. 8CR13 is not the worst you know, thing to have on a budget knife. Um, they did keep the branding to a minimum, which is actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, a usable blade. 
Uh, you can sharpen it. They did bring the plunge all the way down. They did mess up the choil just a little bit, but you know, actually pretty good there. You'll be able to sharpen this knife up quite a bit. Uh, very piercy and pokey. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why my camera struggles so much with this light. But, you know, pretty attractive looking Tonto. Um, not, not bad. Uh, yeah, definitely a usable blade. Nothing spectacular. I do like they're being honest about the steel type that they're using. Um, you know, they're not trying to hide it or anything. I do like that they're putting it on the blade. So that's a big plus. And, uh, yeah, I do enjoy that. Next thing, I do like <laughs> the, um, way that you release the lock. So instead of, instead of cutting a chamfer into the scales and liner, they just raised the lock. And they gave it this nice textured kind of thumb pad. And um, <laughs> I'll get my finger with my two scars. You can tell I'm a knife person. It's very easy to get in there and push that over. And I think that's actually really cool. I don't think I've had another um, liner lock that does this, but I gotta say, I'm a big fan. It does not interfere with the ergonomics. Um, <clears throat> We'll talk about ergonomics in a little bit. It doesn't like interfere with the ergonomics. It's very easy to get to. Like this is the best lock bar access you can get. Um, so yeah, I think that's really, really cool. Okay, let's talk about some negatives. Number one, this thing weighs all the pounds. This is an incredibly, stupidly heavy knife. Um, I'm not someone who cares that much about weight. Right, I don't. I, I, I've carried big knives. I love big knives. I carry things like this all the time. And this is not a lightweight knife, but this thing is just so much more dense. I don't have a scale with me right now, unfortunately. But I mean, gosh, this thing is ridiculously heavy. Ridiculously heavy. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't like that. Also, it's thick without any of the advantages of a thick knife. I've said before, I don't mind a thick pocket knife because it helps fill out the hand. But this is just thick slabs. There's no contour or anything to help with ergonomics. And let's talk about the ergonomics. They are not very good. I mean, they're pretty neutral. You grab it like this, but I can feel things biting in and it's just not something I would like to work with for a long period of time. Is it the worst thing ever? No, but it's almost, it's almost like very bad. It, it, right now, it's bad. Uh, it's not horrendous yet, but it's it's bad. So yeah, ergonomics, not real great. Next thing, the balance on this knife is absolutely in. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's about. Come on, come on. It's about right there. So we're like an inch away from the pivot. This knife feels so unwieldy in hand. You grab this and the blade's like wah, because there's so much weight back here with this stupid, I mean, look how much steel there is. This is just excessive to the point of hilarity. It's so, and look, 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 you can look inside there. I didn't even notice this till now. They, they, they tried to mill it out on the inside. They, <laughs> They did internal milling. So, I mean, I guess I'll give them credit for that, but did they really think it was going to help that much? I just, th th this is a ridiculously heavy knife. But, hey, some people are into that. Personally, I am not. Next thing, this clip is atrocious. This is a disgusting, stupid, horrible clip. Uh, there, there's nothing good about this clip. I mean, okay, there's one good thing. It's tip up. And even then, like, no, no, this clip is horrendous. Look how shallow that carry. I'm not even, again, I'm not someone who cares a whole lot about deep carry. I like to have enough knife to grab onto and pull it out of my pocket, but this is just too much. This is too much. You know, I could walk around and have people just sign the, as much of the knife that's sticking out and, you know, I'd have a book written. It's, it, it's too much. It's uncomfortable in the pocket, it's heavy, it's fat, it just, the way it sits in the pocket since it's this high, it just, it just didn't work out. I'll be honest with you guys, I EDC, I carried this knife 
one day, one day, and that was it. The rest of the time I did any use with this knife, I carried it in my backpack, which was a waste of energy because holy cow, again, this is a brick, and I just pull it out of my backpack and use it and whatever. Um, yeah, Ugh. horrible clip, terrible carry. And last thing, this lanyard, what is this? Why is this? Who was this made for? What? What? This is, I mean, this lanyard is double the length of the knife when it's closed. It's, it's weird. It can't really function like a lanyard. I guess, I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what it's for. I think, I think my, you know, deduction that it's for just swinging the knife around like a melee weapon is, I think that's the, the best theory we're going to come up with. But, um... Yeah, this is just weird and ridiculous. And yes, of course, I can take it off. But I've left it on here because... L look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? Uh, I guess I can't get too mad. Actually, I'm not going to make that joke. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you, mind-to-mouth filter, for kicking in once. Um, yeah, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into my final conclusions. Final conclusions, this is a weird thing because I hate everything about this knife. Um, I really, really do. Uh, but it's not made terribly. Uh, it's actually competently put together. Um, I do think that if this is something that, you're, that you want to EDC and carry around and use, I do think it'll hold up for you. But please don't. Like, there's better stuff out there. I mean, again, ugh. the blade isn't terrible. Y you can get some work done with it, but I don't know. I don't know. I think it's an ugly knife. I think it's a fat knife. Oh, this is the other thing I was going to talk about. These things, what the, what the frick are those? I mean, they don't help with the ergonomics. What they look like is little scoops so you can get to a thumb stud, but there ain't no thumb studs. I didn't see any versions of these that have thumb studs, which I guess I should mention there are multiple ver versions of this knife. Uh, this is the all, like, um, this is the all-coated black one. There's one that has a gray stone wash blade. There's one that I think has, like, Coyote G10 instead of black. You can look all those up. But, um, yeah, this thing's just a little bit, uh, just a little bit goofy. Very good detent. Um, I don't know though. It's uh, it's something else. I will tell you that much. <laughs> Anyways, uh, can I recommend this knife? I'm gonna say no. Um, yeah, of course, this cheap knife week. So we'll talk about everything related to that in our Saturday video, but. Yeah, that's it for today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. And before I go, let's take a peek at tomorrow's knife for Cheap Knife Week. All right, get excited. Anyways, I've been Gideon. I hope you have a great day. Adios.